This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Israel is facing growing condemnation over the torture and rape of Palestinian prisoners. Israel's Channel 12 News aired shocking footage of Israeli soldiers sexually abusing a Palestinian prisoner. The video shows a group of blindfolded prisoners lying on the ground inside a prison at Sdeteman Army Base, which critics have compared to Guantanamo. Israeli guards are then seen taking one man into a corner where the soldiers encircled him and reportedly sexually assaulted him. Israel's investigation of this incident is what led a group of far-right Israeli protesters and lawmakers to break into two military bases last week in an effort to prevent the soldiers from being questioned. Meanwhile, a group of U.N. experts has warned Israel's escalating use of torture of jailed Palestinians as a crime against humanity. The experts wrote, Torture practices are irredeemably unlawful and constitute international crimes, yet form part of the modus operandi of Israel's notorious detention and torture system, unquote. Meanwhile, the Israeli human rights group B'Tselem has published a major new report documenting how the Israeli prison system has become what B'Tselem calls a network of torture camps. I want to turn to an interview conducted by B'Tselem of Ashraf al Mutasa, a father of five from Hebron and a wedding band manager. While detained on the morning of November 18th last year, Ashraf had prison guards storm his cell he shared with other men claiming they were looking for a radio. One morning at six, they raided our cell, about 15 guards with a monstrous dog. Sometimes they made him attack sensitive body parts. They attacked us all, kicking us and hitting us with sticks. I was leaning against the wall behind others in the cell. They started kicking me in the neck and ear. Unfortunately, I got a very hard blow to my ear. I've completely lost my hearing on that side. I got four fractures in my back ribs, three in my chest, and fractures in my hands and other body parts. In another interview conducted by the Israeli human rights group at Salem, 50-year-old Firas Hassan, an official in the Palestinian Authority's Ministry of Youth and Sports, describes not only being beaten by prison guards while in detention, but hearing that their brutal attack is being live-streamed for Itamar Ben-Gavir, the Minister of National Security of Israel, to watch. <laughs> On November 9, 2023, two prison forces, the district unit and the initial response force, came into cell 14 we were in on wing 28. We were 10 Palestinians in the cell. The forces came in massed and beat us for 50 minutes. They laughed while they hit us and live-streamed it all. I understand Hebrew, and I heard one say, we're live-streaming for Ben Gavir, directly to Ben Gavir. They beat us in various ways with their hands and feet, and then brought in police dogs. After, they tied our hands behind our backs and blindfolded us. Betselem also spoke to Sari Haria. He's a 53-year-old real estate lawyer and an Israeli citizen. He was arrested and detained over a Facebook post November 4th last year. In this clip, Sari describes Abdurrahman Nari, a 23-year-old man in the isolation cell next to him, screaming in pain and later being brought out in a body bag. He screamed in pain constantly, begging for the doctor. The guard would come now and then and swear at him and tell him to shut up. In the morning, the guards came to count us. One said, get up, you animal. Get up, you dog. They checked him, and the whole place went silent. 
المحل صار فيه هدوء اللحظة. Finally, the doctor said, there's nothing to be done. One of the guards said to them, my condolences, and they all started laughing. They put him in a black body bag and carried him out like trash. We're joined right now by Sarit Mekaeli, international advocacy lead for the Israeli human rights group at Salem. The group's new report is titled, Welcome to Hell, the Israeli Prison System as a Network of Torture Camps. Sadi, thanks so much for being with us. Um, just as we listen to these horrifying accounts, please lay out your findings. I think on the very fundamental level, uh, Amy, our findings look at the systemic, uh, ongoing and state-sanctioned, government-sanctioned uh, use of torture and abuse in the Israeli prison system vis-a-vis -vis Palestinians, Palestinians who Israel considers to be uh, viewed as security uh, prisoners. Now, this is something that we have uh, discussed in the past. I mean, torture and abuse of Palestinian detainees in uh, detention and interrogations have occurred. They have been documented. But the level, the degree, the scope, the scale of this phenomenon since October 7th uh, are simply unrelated to anything we've seen in the past. Um, and when we look at the way these people are treated, you showed some of the testimonies. Some of the uh, many more testimonies are actually available on our website and we're sharing them uh, online. Um, you see that clearly this isn't the actions of any sort of rogue element of the Israeli prison system. It's a um, government uh, sanctioned and also government supported government uh, mandated uh, policy and that's the essential conclusion that we have from all of the information that we've collected in, re in recent months if you can talk about um Firas, uh who was describing um uh not only being beaten by uh the uh Israeli soldiers, um, but also the fact that this beating was being live streamed for the national security minister of uh, Israel, Itamar Ben Gavir, to watch. So I just want to clarify where. We know that the, the, the police, uh, or the, sorry, the prison guards were discussing this. Uh, certainly, we have not, uh, clar you know, we clarified in, in our communications that we don't know whether this was indeed like a literally live streamed for Itamar Benfir or whether it was more about the, the, the spirit of Itamar Benfir because a lot of the um, things we see on the ground today in the Israeli prison system uh, are directly related to the influence, to the spirit of Minister ben -Gvir. Uh, I think it's certainly not the case that Minister ben -Gvir is the only person responsible. Absolutely, the, the Prime, Minister, Prime Minister Netanyahu, who, who gave him all of this authority, uh, is absolutely responsible and culpable for this reality. But the Israeli government and uh, Ben Gvir have shown again and again since October 7th, but also before October 7th, that they are hell bent, that their intention is to uh, cause this deterioration, to uh, increase uh, the pressure on Palestinian prisoners. Uh, and this was, um, this has been done, and we saw these kinds of developments even prior to October 7th, from the beginning of the tenure of Minister ben -Gvir, as Minister of National Security, he has been imposing his racist, his Kahanist agenda, both on the Israeli police, with great success, unfortunately, and also on the Israeli prison service. Um, October 7th, the, the horror, the, the crimes committed against Israelis uh, on October 7th served as a golden opportunity for ben -Gvir to continue to uh, cynically manipulate the Israeli trauma, the Israeli fear and anger in order to push forward this agenda that he has been promoting be even beforehand. So I think one of the clear things that we've seen on the ground in, and in the, in the system since October 7th was that much of this Israeli policy, at least the, um, the, the, the parts about uh, uh, starving, prisoners, about cramping them, 
all together in, in, uh, in large numbers, in cells, cancelling any possibility for them to have any sort of sustenance, to buy additional food, for example. All of these policies uh, are, have been declared, they've been uh, stated by the Israeli government. They haven't hid this. Uh, ben Gvir himself has been... Um, on the media promoting these policies and showing, you know, having these like show visits to visit prisoners that he claims are Nukba, right? Our Palestinian, our, our uh, Hamas uh, fighters from Gaza. But what we have seen again and again, based on the testimonies that we've taken, is that the Israeli policy wasn't just applied to Palestinian uh, Hamas suspects. We would argue, by the way, that this is absolutely categorically prohibited, regardless of the crimes people have been, uh, have committed. Torture and, uh, and this type of treatment is absolutely prohibited. Uh, but Israel uh, is claiming, uh, and in some cases um, uh, showing, right, to, uh, uh, performing in a way, and this is, I think, the, the incident that was described in this, is this, in this testimony seems very much an example of this. Um, not just uh, the kind of uh, actual violence and ill treatment and humiliation, but making it very, very public. And this is something that is simply chilling and is part of the really deep moral abyss that this report exposes, I think, within our society today. Um the Israeli Supreme Court considered a petition yesterday to close a desert military prison where soldiers have been accused of abusing Palestinians. Most recently, this shocking video that aired on uh, Israeli News 12, the Channel 12, uh, showing Israeli soldiers sexually abusing a Palestinian prisoner. Talk about that video and what the Supreme Court is calling for or if they've had a ruling yet. Well, I think there's a few things to unpack in this uh, in this situation. It's I, I mean, again, regardless of the specifics of this individual case, B'Tselem hasn't documented it. We're not uh, familiar enough with the details. I think this is a moment within Israeli society where the old way of doing things, which involved very often these sham investigations, right, pretending that we're holding soldiers accountable for violations of Palestinian rights and investigating suspected wrongdoing, this is rejected, is being rejected by a growing maybe majority, certainly very large number of Israelis who are simply not interested in any kind of accountability because they do not believe that Palestinians deserve any rights. And this is an interesting and quite uh, disturbing uh, and very, very depressing uh, situation to experience because the, um, the power and the violence uh, released by the recent, for example, uh, uh, charging of uh, far-right activists into the Sdeteman uh, military base and into the Beit Lid military base isn't just going to harm, you know, the, the specific investigative bodies that we are very critical of. This is an action that is very concerted and coordinated by the Israeli far-right in order to, uh, to, to scare off any type of law enforcement in Israeli society. And this is why I think it's so deeply connected to what we've seen yesterday in the High Court. There is a High Court petition against Sdeteman. It's being, it was um, presented by the Israeli, by the Association for Civil Rights in Israel. Um, and the state has as is its custom, denied that there is any wrongdoing in Sdeteman. But it's, there's also another kind of parallel development, which is that a far-right mob has actually uh, verbally uh, charged the High Court justices yesterday in the Israeli High Court and also tried to assault the lawyers acting on behalf of ACRI. And I think this is a, an excellent example of what has been happening to the gatekeepers in Israel. This is an example of why these gatekeepers, who were meant to protect against the type of abuses that we describe in this report, they have been so scared off, they've been so weakened and paralyzed after many, many years of these types of far-right and even quite centrist uh, assaults that 
uh, the type of reality that we exposed in the report is allowed to go um, pretty much uh, on as uh, Minister Benvir pleases with very little resistance from the high court, the, the other courts, uh, from the attorney general. Now, certainly we have had we, and we're still extremely critical of these uh, institutions, of the Israeli court system, of the Israeli uh, um, uh, attorney general. But we do expect them to stand up to this type of um, abuse, to this type of official torture. And I think one of the reasons why Ben Gvir has been so successful in imposing his own agenda, his racist, Kahanist agenda, is this weakness, the, the um, cowering of the gatekeepers uh, that have been weakened for so many years. And can you talk about the protests that took place um, in the last days, trying to prevent the Israeli soldiers or police from being questioned about the sexual assault or the rape of a Palestinian prisoner? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I should also maybe open this with with the one point of light in the current reality, which is that since the, the publication of B'Tselem's report, and also since the publication and the exposure of the story about these really horrific suspicions in Steteman, um, the la there's, there's been a very strong voice coming from Israelis who are categorically oppose this. Not necessarily Israelis who are absolutely with, with B'Tselem on everything, mainstream Israelis who um, know, who understand that if you are a country that claims you're a democracy, of course, we would take great issue with this, then you cannot simply abuse people because you suspect them or because you, you've accused them and even because you've convicted them of perpetrating the, the most horrific crimes. This is simply unacceptable. And people are saying this very openly in our society today. These might not be the majority of Israelis, but it's very heartening to hear these voices again and again, as I said, also in response to, to B'Tselem's report. But the story itself, the reason it got such prominent prominence is because it really is... Um, it's something that one did not expect to see uh, up until really the, the recent period. And, and I'm saying that even though, you know, as I said, B'Tselem's report also uh, revealed additional cases of suspected sexual and gender-based abuse. The story uh, of the suspicions of sexual abuse by soldiers in Steteman um, has generated a mass public outcry, but it's also generated um, a mass response by proponents of the far right, of the Khanist movement in Israel, who simply do not want any kind of action by Israeli soldiers against Palestinians to be subject of any sort of accountability process. I mean, that's the whole point. From their perspective, they would like to have a completely um, a, a open a field in terms of what they could do to Palestinians, and this is both for soldiers and settlers. And anyone who tries to impose any, even the, the most rudimentary, the most basic uh, uh, level of accountability is attacked as an enemy of the state, as a traitor. And this brings us into a quite an absurd situation where uh, bodies that we are, as I said, are extremely critical of, for example, the state attorney's office and also the military advocate general's office are now coming under fire not for what we would argue is the correct uh, reason, the fact that they have enabled Israel to allow, to, to allow the army and soldiers uh, on the ground to use totally disproportionate force against Palestinians. They've enabled almost everything that Israel has been doing in Gaza in recent months, the mass killings, the, the um, starvation, the... Uh, the horrific things we have done in, in Gaza. Um, this is not what the far right is criticizing these institutions for. The, crit the criticism is coming um, when in the very, very rare cases where there is an, an occasional investigation when the Israeli investigative bodies simply don't have any other choice. I'm assuming, I, I'm, I'm, I'm only speculating, right? But the fact that there is 
uh, CCTV footage of this alleges, alleged assault uh, and the fact that the story has become so prominent and the possibility of an internal whistleblower inside who reported this uh, have left the authorities really with no option other than to conduct this investigation. Um, certainly many other cases and, and the broad policy is not investigated, but they are still attacked by the right for this tiny foray into uh, accountability. I want to go to yesterday's briefing at the U.S. State Department, where Matthew Miller is questioned about this issue. This is the reporter Rabia Iqlal-Turan. Going back to Israel, uh, Israeli media today released uh, a video showing Israeli soldiers raping a Palestinian detainee at Sadi Taman detention camp. Uh, the footage was very disturbing. Uh, you, I know you have commented on the reports about this detention center before, but the, we have now we now have a new evidence, which is video. Have you seen that video? And do you have anything to say on that? And also the reports of you know rape yeah. in Israeli prisons. So we have seen the video and reports of sexual abuse uh, of detainees are horrific. They ought to be investigated fully by the government of Israel, by the IDF. Um, prisoners need to be treated. Uh, pr prisoners' human rights need to be respected in all cases. And when there are alleged violations, the government of Israel needs to take steps to investigate those who are alleged to have committed abuses and, if appropriate, hold them accountable. And actually, this is not the first rape incident we have been hearing about Israeli prisons and Israeli human rights group. Beth Salem on Monday released a report saying that Sedet Amen is only tip of the iceberg and that, you know, Israeli detention centers turned into a network of torture camps for Palestinian Palestinians. It reports cited testimonies from 55 Palestinian detainees. So uh, I know Israelis uh, are investigating this, but would you support an invest independent investigation into those allegations? So I would have to look at what the specific uh, in independent investigation people are calling for um, and pass judgment uh, on the merits. But look, there ought to be zero tolerance for sexual abuse, rape of any detainee, period. So that's the State Department spokesperson, Matthew Miller. Um, Sarit Makhaili, if you could talk about the significance of uh, what he is saying and what you are demanding at this point as the international advocacy lead for the Israeli human rights group at Salem. Yes, um, Amy. Well, I think the most important thing to clarify in terms of our response to this is that it's, Israel is not going to hold an investigation into the um, conduct and into the policies uh, in its detention centers for the pure reason, for the obvious reasons, that these are policies. They're not the actions of rogue elements, as I said. They're not the actions of individuals who are going against the grain. They're dictated by the management of the Israeli prison system and by the government. They are supported by these, uh, these um, uh, bodies. And therefore, the only options for investigations are individual cases that are either so egregious that it would be impossible for the authorities to ignore them because of international pressure, or in cases where there is some sort of uh, documentation. And that is generally, I think, uh, when you look at Israeli investigations, that is generally the way the Israeli authorities work. The small, isolated token investigations cover up for broader policies. And in this specific case, I think, from our perspective, we have a not not appealed and we've not requested uh, Israeli investigations. B, we do not expect any Israeli investigations to fundamentally alter the situation. What we do expect is the international community to take action. And in the report, we've appealed to all nations and also to all relevant ins international institutions to look into the situation, to make it a uh, to, to make it stop. Um, specifically, we've also appealed to the International Criminal Court because these offenses that we uh, list in our reports are uh, war crimes. They uh, also, we would argue, reach the magnitude of crimes against humanities. And this is the um, 
responsibility of the international community, including the United States government, to address. It's not just an intra-Israeli issue. Certainly, the Israeli government, in its current uh, standing, I mean, it's, it's pretty blatantly obvious that if the Israeli government is not able to hold an investigation into such serious allegations of horrific abuse that uh, without um, a mob of uh, right-wing uh, fanatics rushing, storming into two military bases, then it's blatant that Israel isn't going to be able, to, willing or able to address this broader policy of, uh, of torture, you know, by order, essentially, in, against Palestinians since October 7th. Sadiq Mikhaeli, I want to thank you for being with us from Tel Aviv, International Advocacy Lead for the International for the Israeli Human Rights Group at Salem. We'll link to your new report, Welcome to Hell. The Israeli prison system is a network of torture camps.